I've often covered the dangers of so-called gender-affirming care and trans ideology being pushed on impressionable children. Jazz Jennings is a case that the LGBT lobby have clung to in an effort to push their agenda. The 22-year-old's transition journey was chronicled in a hit reality TV series, I Am Jazz, covering the child's life, family and gender-affirming procedures, including puberty blockers and eventual surgery. But is Jazz Jennings' story really as successful as the transgender activists would want you to believe? Joining me to discuss is Head of Research at LGB Alliance, Malcolm Clark. Malcolm, you wrote a fantastic piece about the tragedy of Jazz Jennings where you unpack the darker reality behind Jennings' transition journey. In so many ways, it really is a dark story. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, I, I do a lot of research on the history of the gay movement and the history of the so-called LGBTQ movement. And obviously, um, like most people, I just accepted the rough outline of the story of jazz as we've been presented it by the American mainstream media. Um, and then I decided, as I often do, to go back and, and really analyse what we were told. And so I went back to the original broadcasts uh, with Barbara Walters in 2007 when mm. she went to see a little four-year-old. And, um, and I was just amazed when I watched it to see how Barbara Walters, who was this icon of American journalism, wasn't asking any searching questions and was just accepting everything that Jazz Jennings' rather strange uh, mother in particular her, and her parents in general were saying about, I say her, so, that, so it's so easy to get, you know, to use the wrong pronouns. I mean, the point is Jazz Jennings is a boy, was a boy and is a man, um, but, but the mainstream media convinced us that this boy was a girl. And when you go back and look at the original footage, you're amazed at how much uh, were being deluded by her parents and how much it seems to me that it, it may well have been, if not a grift, then, uh, then something very close to a shared delusion across the family. Well, I've, spoke to, I've spoken to um, trans woman Blair White uh, on a number of occasions and uh, one of her great I lines is a transgender four-year-old. <laughs> yeah, she uh, tells it like it is. Uh, but one of her great lines is uh, a transgender four-year-old is like a vegan cat. We all know who's making the lifestyle decisions. And talking about Absolutely. the parents in this case, um, they claim she wanted to medically transition from when she was a toddler, from when she was two years old. Let's have a look. I'll never forget one day I was at the computer and Jazz came up to me and she said, Mom, when is the good fairy going to come with her magic wand and change my penis into a vagina? And I was really confused. You know, I have this two-year-old coming up to me and saying, you know, I'm a girl. Like I had a pit inside of my stomach. I'm like, my kid is not normal. I mean, this is not normal. They took me to the doctor when I was three years old and she held up two dolls. One doll was a girl and had girl parts. And one doll was a boy and had boy parts. And she said, which do you have right now? And I pointed to the boy doll. And then she said, which do you want? And I pointed to the girl. The astonishing thing is I haven't seen that little clip, but I've seen so many different clips where Jeanette Jennings, the mother, and Jazz tell so many different versions of this story. Um, for example, the, the bit you've just played with Jazz saying that that uh, the doctor said X, Y, and Z. Well, well, I've seen interviews with the doctor who says a very different version of it. She, Marilyn Volker, who was the doctor, doctor, who was a, a sex therapist, no, no, not even... Marilyn Volker, the idea that you would go to Marilyn Volker to find out if your kid was trans is so ludicrous. But Marilyn Volker says the opposite. She says that it was trans, that was Jazz who, who said these specific things. And she says that, that Jazz said, I want to have that body looking at the little girl doll. But now I hear that Jazz says it's mm. the opposite. And it was Marilyn who said that, which is much more believable. You know, who would ask a child 
these are two dolls. Which which yeah. doll would you like to be in the future? I mean, that's ludicrous. And even if look, if, if I said in my article, if if I had been shown dolls of Batman and Superman, and and a therapist had said which which man would you, which which superstar would you like to be? I might have pointed to Superman, but that doesn't mean to say they should attach wings to my my body or do things to me. It's so absurd. However, Jeanette Jennings also oh. said that she had decided herself that, that that Jazz was born in the wrong body. She looked at the diagnostic, you know, the DSM, uh, the, the sort of um, uh, health book that looks at all the different mental health issues, and doctors rely on it, but that's doctors. Jeanette is just, you know, a, a citizen of South Florida, has no medical background. She decides to look at the DSM and diagnoses for herself that her child is transgender. And then she says, I just needed someone to confirm it. And so she went to Marilyn Volker. I mean, the story doesn't make any sense at all. And if you had, if you were Barbara Walters, if you or I were in the position that Barbara Walters was in mm. 2007, we would have asked them questions. We, we would have kept our skepticism. That's all that, you know, that's the responsibility wow. you have to your audience. Oh, absolutely. And I wonder whether some of that media coverage really just <laughs> made this path that Jazz was sent on irreversible. It, it was There was too much attention. There was too many people cheering for this madness. Uh, and, and when you've got parents like that in the mix. And I just want to play you a clip here of uh, the brutal reality of, of some of that so-called gender-affirming medical care that Jazz received. Here is the mother again. But with her, I'm worried about, like, her mental well-being and her dilation. The minute she leaves my house, we have a dilation problem. That, that is a concern. Be. When you don't have that watchful eye, they tend to go back to old patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep and taken the dilator and put the lubrication on it and said, here, you take this and you put it in your vagina. If not, I will. But Jazz is bad, even when I'm home once a day. I will be so mad if she goes away to college and that thing seals up. I will wring her neck. Can you imagine? No, I oh, yeah, that just vision chilling, disturbed I mean, many people. It's so chilling. I mean, for a, for a mother to be so glib about the fact that her, her child has been castrated and, and to buy into this idea that the neo-vagina um, will need to be continually dilated and then to imagine doing it herself. I mean, it is so bizarre. It's so gothic and yet it's extraordinary that this reality show in particular, but, but the American media has normalized something that 20 years ago, if you were talking about a, a teenager and the mother, his mother was going to use something like a I mean, basically a sex toy, but it's just, it's the same sort of device to to keep the wound mm. open. I mean, we would people would have thought this is some sort of horrific scenario, a science fiction scenario, and yet we're now told this is normal, and that we're in fact to celebrate it. Oh, and uh, one can only hope that perhaps ten, twenty years from now, people will look back at this period with. Uh, absolute shock and disgust and then we've moved along from this uh, current yeah. phenomenon because Jazz may have been one of the very first high profile transitions but in the TikTok age there are now thousands of parents and youngsters who are documenting their transition journeys online so this problem I think is only going to get bigger before hopefully there is some correction. Malcolm Clark, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you too.